the nation's third-rated team, the Michigan Wolverines, against the Wisconsin Badgers. I'm Van Stout, joined by Merritt Norvell, and what a way for Barry Alvarez in his first Big Ten campaign to kick off his conference season against the nation's third best team, the Michigan Wolverines, who are led by their first-year coach, Gary Moeller. Yeah, I think that this is uh, uh, this is the way to do it. Uh, this is uh, I think this is the number one team in the nation right now. This is what people come to uh, the Big Ten to do. This is what kids practice for. So I think this is a great opportunity. It's a major challenge for the Badgers today. But I think this is what Big Ten football is all about. Is this kind of a David and Goliath type matchup? Yeah, I think though I don't think there's any there's any question that the Badgers match up against this very talented Wolverine team in terms of experience and size and and speed and everything else. But I think that uh, uh, it should be a very entertaining football game for the people at home today. Okay, we had a chance to talk with Barry Alvarez just about going up against this Wolverine squad. What worries you most about this Michigan team? I think the fact that they can run the ball and you can't do anything about it. I think when, when somebody can run the football consistently, uh, they dictate the game. They've done that. First, their first two ball games, they did that. and they, they didn't do it as consistently as they would have liked against Maryland, but uh, that's what concerns me, them just hand, being able to hand off control of the game. Has the two weeks of, of practice and preparation for Michigan helped your team in the sense that maybe they have refound themselves, I guess, rekindled the spirit somewhat? I don't know about that. I think it, it's helped us as far as fundamentals and getting getting back to basics. And, and uh, we just felt like in some areas we needed to go back and compete and play against good against good and we went against one another quite a bit the last two weeks just trying to improve and we, and we told the kids it wasn't a form of punishment but we had to improve as a football team and that's what we had to you know we had to go against one another and and uh, spend time doing it and get back to basics possession and ball control will be two key elements for wisconsin to have any kind of success against michigan because if you do that you keep their offense off the field but turnovers have to also figure into that and factor into that as well won't they turnovers turnovers always always uh you know, add to the ball game. If, if you know, if you lose the turnover battle, then uh, you have a good chance of losing the football game. But for us to have a chance, we've got to move the chains. We've got to keep keep the clock running. And 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 you're right, keep their offense off the field. Do you think that somehow, by some weird happening, that Michigan could be overlooking a Wisconsin pointing to Michigan State the next Saturday? I really don't know, and I, I can't concern myself with that. The only thing I concern myself with is our football team and how they'll play and how they'll compete. That, that's that's my main concern right now. I want to see them try to turn it turn it loose, and I think we've played very cautiously. We've got some kids who really haven't learned how to really let their hair down and get after it, and, and uh, that, that's what I want them to do. Just play hard and, and follow the plan that we've given them and, and, and compete. You know, he talked about playing with a lot of reckless abandon out there. They're going to have to do that this afternoon if they can try to bottle up one John Vaughn who comes in as the nation's leading running back. John Vaughn is probably the best running back, tailback, in the University of Michigan in the last 20 years. Uh, I happen to have four Michigan people at my <laughs> house this weekend. One, one of them uh, is a current player, and he says, this young man you see on this monitor right here is the fastest football player he's ever tried to tackle. He's a 4-2, legitimate 4-2 in the 40, and about a 10-2 in the 100 meters. Now, how smart are they at Michigan? This guy used to be a defensive back, Merrick. Come on now. Well, uh, when you got that kind of depth <laughs> at Michigan, when you got guys like Bowles and Horde and Wolfolk and those guys, you can hide a kid like this for two years, and then you can pull him out of the shoebox and say, surprise. <laughs> it also helps that he's running behind a massive offensive line. Line, and that's a major concern for a couple of batters in the defensive line, most notably Don Davey. Well, Don Davey, uh, senior tackle, captain of the University of Wisconsin here, uh, number uh, 91, is having a great season so far. He's six foot four, 270 pounds, uh, three-time GTE All Academic All Americans, having a great season. He has to have an outstanding football game today because we physically just don't match up with this massive Michigan line. And his line mate, you talk about that Michigan offensive line, about six four, 290 pounds per man, and that uh, presents another formidable challenge for uh, Mr. Batch. Mr. Batch, he's a little smaller, a little taller, six five, 255 pounds, but he's the left tackle, having a pretty good year. He's at 20 tackles. 
Uh, Danny's going to have to once again have an outstanding game. One of the things that we hope we can do today is that we can outquick these big guys. That's a major, major challenge. And you kind of uh, open up Pandora's box, Merritt's box, if you will, with your own keys. Uh, how do you see this one breaking down? Well, we feature the two defensive players, and I think that let's talk about those keys. I think defense, number one, is going to be one of the major keys today. Wisconsin absolutely does not match up with Michigan physically. This is a very talented, a very large, 293 to 300 pounds, depending who's in the ball game. Veteran Michigan team. They have 17 returning starters, 49 lettermen. I guess Bo left Mo an outstanding football team, and I think it's the best team in the country right now. They run a no-huddle offense. They run. They are averaging 463 yards per game, 35 points per game. This is going to be a major challenge for Wisconsin's front seven. The down linemen, as well as those linebackers, they're going to have to rise to the occasion today and play a great football game. Key number two. Key number two is turnovers. You heard Barry Alvarez talk about turnovers. We haven't turned the ball over very much in terms of Wisconsin. But I tell you, turnovers today against this defense, this is a big play Michigan defense. They get in a third down situation. They like to take their All-American strong safety, Trey Wilborn, who's over 200 pounds, and blitz him in there. So we cannot afford to turn the ball over in our, in our territory because we're going to give them a key offensive situation. They're a big team. They've got big defensive backs. Number three is special teams. Michigan probably has the one or two of the best special teams in the United States. They clearly have the best special teams in the Big Ten. They've got big ten, big time special teams players in Howard, in Wellborn, in Alexander, in Murray. They like to get good field position on you. If we can kick the ball, we can get some big plays out of our special teams guys. We're going to have good field position and we'll keep ourselves in this ball game. And the last one, number four, is passing. Now, the wind is swirling quite a bit today. We know that we can pass against Michigan. Every team they have played this year has been able to pass against them. They've been giving up yardage, John, characteristic of a yep. Michigan defense, giving up better than 400 yards a game on offense. That's right. I like the way uh, uh, Russ Jakes, Wisconsin's offensive coordinator, described him. He says they're a very good defensive team between the 20s. They're a great defensive team inside the 20-yard line. They bend, but they tend not to break. We can throw against them. I think we can run against them because their defensive front line, even though they, they average something like four sacks per man, they don't match up against our massive offensive line. Well, will it be a David against Goliath type matchup? We'll see as this one unfolds. It's the Big Ten opener between Wisconsin and Michigan. As you can see, the 50th meeting between these Big Ten squads. Michigan leads the series 48 and 1. The Badgers last won against the Wolverines in 1981 when Michigan came in here, the season opener for both squads, and at that time ranked number one in the preseason. And of course, last year, the Wolverines prevailed by the final count of 24 0, although that game was only 7 0 at the half. You can see Old Glory there in the breeze, and that is a factor, a very uncharacteristic type day in terms of temperature. Here in the first weekend in October, 73 degrees, but look at the winds. And that could be a major factor, Merritt, as this game unfolds. And you get a panoramic view of a Camp Randall Stadium and uh, a lot of red and white dotting the stands. That's always a good sign to see. Well, that's definitely a good sign. I can tell you, as a, as a, a member of the athletic board, I love to see that many people in the stands. This is going to be an absolutely great day to play this game. I was down on the field earlier, man. It's pretty warm down there on the field. The wind, even though it's swirling quite a bit up above, doesn't seem to be as strong down on the on the field. I think that works to the Badgers' advantage right now because I think they're going to have to throw the football to keep themselves in this ball game and to keep the offense on the field. The officials say, hey, what a break for Barry Alvarez. He gets an all Big Ten squad for a change, right? He's had uh, split squads, it seems like, every Saturday. And for a time or two during the course of a game, he's had some questionable calls. And they're led by Gil Markman, joined by Don Thayer, Jim Mullendor, Jim Keough, Bob Colburn, Jay Salmon, and Jim Sherlock. So uh, at least these guys are going to know one another. And maybe as we go down to the midfield area there, the W in the middle of the field, you can see as they uh, get set to find out who wins the coin toss and who will receive, who will defer into the second half. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, they, uh, uh, this will be the first time that we've had an all Big Ten uh, crew. And hopefully they can do a better job, in my opinion, than the split crews that we've had in the past. I think we're going to do players of the week now coming up as we look at them getting ready to do the flip. Okay. 
Well, Wisconsin has won the coin toss, and let's see if they defer to the second half or not. Here you get a look at Dean Dingman. He's from East Troy, Wisconsin, the only Wisconsin player on the Michigan squad, and he is a big one, 6'3", 292 pounds strong, Wisconsin. They will receive. All-American from East Troy, Wisconsin. There you get a glimpse of Barry Alvarez as he gets set to lead his troops out of the field. Their first Big Ten encounter of the 1990 season. Here are the players of the week. Of course, the Badgers have had two weeks off to prepare for this Michigan game last Saturday. Michigan was at home against Maryland. Offense, Tony Lowry had his best passing day ever as a Badger. Defensively, Don Davey, we talked about him in our pregame. Special teams, Scott Nelson out of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Scout offense, Jason White and Jamel Brown. And there you see the Badgers' first-year coach, Barry Alvarez. Gary Moeller, his counterpart, over on the far sideline, has his maize and blue-clad Wolverines already out there. And that's not Gary Moeller right yet, but we'll, be, we'll get him as the day unfolds. As we said, the Big Ten openers for Michigan, since 1968, they have won 21 of 22 Big Ten openers. Their lone stumble, if you will, 1981, right here at Camp Randall Stadium. So since then, they are 15-0-1 in their last 16 Big Ten games. Not too bad. And, uh, Merritt, you talked about what a way for a first-year coach to come into a situation. Gary Muller, he inherits practically a national championship-type caliber team. Yeah, well, I think that uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Barry Alvarez can say as, the, as a Wisconsin coach is that he has beaten Michigan more than he has lost to them. <laughs> you know, and Gary Moeller talked about it earlier in the week uh, and the fact that when, obviously, he was an assistant head coach and the offensive coordinator at Michigan under Bo Schindbeckler, that Barry Alvarez, when he was at Notre Dame and then, of course, prior to that at Iowa, that they always had a great defensive scheme against the Wolverine offense. Right. And I'm sure that Gary Moeller, even though the personnel difference is going to be substantial, Wisconsin versus Notre Dame or even in Iowa defensively, that uh, Coach Alvarez has a few tricks up his sleeve defensively. And personality-wise, when you talk to the people from Michigan, this Michigan team really hasn't changed. Uh, the only person that's really gone is Bo. And, of course, Bo is such a dominant person, but... Uh, uh, Mo is also a very dominant personality type, and, and some of the Michigan players say that Moeller actually works them harder than Schimbeckler did when he was there. That's possible. <laughs> Here you see J.D. Carlson, who will handle the kickoff chores and the place-kicking chores for the Wolverines, 5'10", junior out of Tallahassee, Florida. Back deep, maybe a game-breaker for Wisconsin. Boy, would they love to start this one off in style with Troy Vincent. He is back uh, healthy again. And he can be a big factor in the outcome of this ball game as far as Wisconsin special teams are concerned. Well, I tell you, uh, Troy is a big play guy, uh, and we certainly need one out of him today. Vincent, the sun in his eyes from his own four-yard line. The wall, straight up the field. He goes through that wall and by the wall to about the 25-yard line. Pretty good up-front protection for Troy Vincent. He ran up and threw it, and the Badgers set up shot from their own 25-yard line for Tony Lowry and company. We'll check their offensive unit as they step out onto the field. Raps, Polsinski, Godfrey, Bastion, Pierce, and Miller. Pretty big offensive front. Uh, not quite as big as Michigan's, but they're up there. And the backfield, Lowry, Ellison, Robinson, Ware, and Williams will set Michigan's defensive front when we have the opportunity. Out of the eye back, number 25, Raphael Robinson. We get a good glimpse of Tony Lauer, his career best ever, throwing the ball two weeks ago against Temple. Trying to spring Robinson to the outside, and maybe he got about a half yard to a yard on the play. Tried to cut it back up inside. And he did not have a chance to do so because big number 97, Hutchison, good player for the Wolverine defense. He makes a stop. There you see their line, Hutchison, Osman, and Evans. The linebackers, Neil Simpson, Eric Anderson, Dave Dobreff, and Martin Davis. The secondary veteran group, one of the best in the country, Walborn, Murray, Dotton, and Key. Second and eight for the Badger offense. They try to spring. Robinson again, he did a nice job of staying on his feet. He was dragging Dotton along the play. So it sets up a third and fourth situation. Pretty good job by Rafael Robinson of picking up yardage after he was stopped initially. Well, if there's any if there's any weakness in this 
and any weakness in this Michigan offense right now and this Michigan defense it's in their linebackers and that's because they're young and somewhat inexperienced now Anderson is the, is the best of the two uh, and Wisconsin's trying to see if they can establish an inside running game right now third and three they call it again Robinson the lone running back straight drop back has time and intending the pass for his tight end dragging across the field and that was Kerry Miller and just overthrown he had a couple of options to throw to he chose to go to the tight end and unfortunately overthrew it. Well there was a little lack of patience there on, the, on behalf of uh, Tony because Lionel Crawford had the first down and was wide open on that play and I just don't think that uh, Tony saw him. It's easy for us to say up here right <laughs> we don't have those guys in our face back deep for the Wolverines you got caught a glimpse of them there trip Wellborn, and you talk about a game breaker well he is possibly that Brecky hangs up a nice spiral calling for making the fair catch as well and that's the best way to negate Wellborn, get a good kickoff and don't allow him to set up the return. Well I tell you when you got a guy that's averaging uh, 25 to 30 yards of return. Uh, we did well there. Got froze on the 30 yard line. 39 yard boot by Brad Brecky. And now let's set Michigan's offense. Screpidic, Dingman, Elliott, Picasso, Doring, and Debolt to tie it in. And they're going with a, not a patchwork, but Elliott is in at center because of an injury to Everett. The backfield, Gerback, Bunch, Vaughn, Alexander, and Howard. Outstanding receivers in Alexander and Howard. They had a Great pair last year in McMurtry and Callaway. They haven't seemed to drop off much. Split backfield now for the Wolverines. Gerback, straight drop back. Over the middle, finds the man, has the first down. The pass gathered in by number 83, the tight end, Dave Debo, out of Mayfield, Ohio, a junior. Coming in with four catches, make it five. Now we'll set Wisconsin's defense. As the Wolverines on their first play get a first down Davey McGettigan getting the start at nose guard back they're still trying to find somebody that wants to play let's go back to the action now the Wolverines go with their no huddle offense here's Vaughn trying to cut it back and hit initially at the line and Vaughn picks up maybe three and a half yards on the play brought down by Brendan Lynch and Don Davey. Well that's what uh, Wisconsin would like to keep them in a second third second third and long he just takes the ball they zone block and they allow John Vaughn to run where he sees daylight now you can do that with a big strong experienced veteran line again Michigan going with a no huddle out of the eye second down and five Gerback goes to the near sideline and a nice catch going out of bounds number one Derek Alexander coming in with 10 catches, 13 yard average per reception. Well, I tell you, when you got Alexander and you got Desmond Howard in their receivers, uh, it makes you quickly forget about guys like McMurphy. Now, now, as you see here, Troy Vincent way back off of him. Uh, he's a 4 4 40 speed, so Troy's actually obviously very sensitive to that speed at this point in time. The Wolverines into Wisconsin territory on that game. First and 10 inside the 45 yard line. That play stopped. Jared Bunch, his first carry, the fullback, and he is solid. 6'2", 247 pounds senior, and he is strong as a bull ox. Now, one of the things, Van, that we might want to talk about early so the folks at home understand this no huddle uh, offense that Michigan has is that they, they don't tend to hurry. It's not like a two-minute offense. They send in two plays from the sideline, and the quarterback has the option to call either one if he wants. Little inside counter and Don Davey, and Ooh. he got away. I no, thought he, he could get, get away, away with he it, but it. inadvertent face mask. As soon as he got a hold of the face mask, he quickly took his hand away. But unfortunately, the referee caught him, and I would imagine that will be not a personal foul, but an inadvertent face mask. But nonetheless, Wisconsin will be penalized. Just to finish up on this conversation about the no huddle offense, what it does to the defense, and it limits what you can do in terms of calling your defensive plays and the, and the types of substitutions that you can make. Every once in a while, you'll watch, and you'll run in an extra tight end, which really dictates a different type of defensive set to the defense. So it kind of keeps your defense off stride. Well, and that's you, the whole purpose of it. If they go with a double tight end, chances are you would expect that they're going to probably run the ball, whereas if they go with a single tight end, that opens up to the passing situation, perhaps. 
But I've noticed something about uh, Michigan on this first couple of series of downs. Now, we know that 75 to 80 percent of the time they run the football on first down. They've been throwing it on first down. In fact, the first the first play from scrimmage was a pass over the middle. That's an unfortunate penalty against Don Davey that time. Uh, they had a potential loss there. And unfortunately, out moves Michigan into a second and three situation. And if you're an offensive coordinator, you love to have second and short. And Alan Jefferson into the lineup in place of John Vaughn. And he was trying to get some running room. And the Badger defensive line did a nice job of stringing the play out. And I think leading the charge was number 90, Pat McGettigan, out of Darlington, Wisconsin. And Alan Jefferson did not have a lot of running room that opportunity. Well, the Badgers need a, a, a lot of big play from the nose guard and those inside linebackers today because Michigan likes to run the ball right at you. They feel they're big enough and strong enough to play power football with you. Third and one, we'll call it. Michigan out of the eye. You think 25 gets it? Yes, he does. He has the first down inside the 30-yard line. 25, John Vaughn coming in. 578 yards on the ground. That is more than Wisconsin has as a team in three games. He's a single player. Averaging better than seven yards per carry. He scored five touchdowns, his longest run from scrimmage, 63 yards. And as we said, he was a defensive back. He was a defensive back. While well, sometimes you find your best athletes on the defensive side of the football. What a nice problem to have. Gerback gets some pressure. Screen pass. They set it up to Vaughn. Trying to crash through Lamar. Great White play. With a great, great play. play. And he played off a block by Ding Dingman out of East Troy, Wisconsin. And credit Lamar White with a super play. Smelling out the screen. Well, I tell you that uh, it's a, Lamar is not a big person, but he smells this out. Gerback drops back. You see the Michigan lineman floating up. They're trying to spring uh, John Vaughn loose. Lamar sneaks underneath number 78 and gets the tackle. That's difficult to do. If Dingman falls, he squashes him. <laughs> Dingman, 6'3", as we said, just over 290 pounds. Michigan now under five seconds on the 25-second clock. Gerback might be changing off the line. He quickly gets the snap away. Inside hand off the delay, and Wisconsin again leading the charge. Good play by Wisconsin. Was Greg Thomas. They smelled the play. They got good initial surge, and now the, the players on the Badger sideline trying to get the fans into the game. And look at this. Mr. Vaughn is down for the count. Gary Moeller's throat is up in his mouth right now. <laughs> Well, I tell you, it's just a, it's just a simple draw play. Uh, Bass in there first. There's Kurt Madanowski comes in, slows him down. He can't. He's having trouble getting started. And I think Eddie, that's Eddie Fletcher. Fletcher. I think he got the helmet in the midsection. Well, Eddie's a small little field. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those are the worst hits of the hits that you can't see, and he could not see him coming. And as he tried to get that additional yard, number seven laid a hit on him. There was a loose ball down there. That's the kind of play that they're going to have to get from the Badgers, though. They're going to have to swarm and claw and pursue in order to slow this Michigan vaunted uh, offense down. Let's see who's the backup. We got Kenny Solomon as the backup for. Uh, nope, take that back. No, Alan Jefferson. Alan back Jefferson. Tailback, and then Ricky Powers yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things about this Michigan team, they've got three or four All Americans on there. Everybody else has been all something. All Big Ten, honorable mention All Big Ten. They've probably got a half a dozen or more kids on this team who have been players of the states in which they've been recruited in. For those of you who are interested in recruiting, that's the way you build a solid foundation for your football program. you got to get 25 or 30% of the blue trippers in the country each year to, to build some depth on your football team. It helps when you're selling the Michigan tradition. 205,000 and countless Big Ten championships. Now, a key juncture here for Wisconsin's defense. Third and nine as Jefferson comes in, having replaced John Vaughn at tailback. Two Big wide play. outs split to the wide side of the field. Gerback having completed 58% of his passes, going over the middle, and he finds the man inside the five-yard line. Touchdown! What a play by the West Michigan offense and Desmond Howard, his fourth receiving touchdown pass of the ball. This one, you think you got him trapped, they burned him. Well, you had him. Gerback had lots of time, and I don't, I'm not sure that Howard was his initial receiver. Let's see if we can get a look at that on the replay. Carlson will come in to attempt the point after. Thus far in that 
department, 14 of 14 this fall. So with 9.37 on a third down and nine situation, a high snap by Troopy. But the kick is good by Carlson and the Wolverines this way. make something out of nothing. Third and nine and we're back with all sorts of time. Well, Howard is just a red shirt foul for he's not a big guy, 5'9", 176 pounds, but very quick, goes down, runs a quick end pattern across the middle, uh, finds his zone, and now we just see poor tackling here, and he walks it into the end zone for a touchdown. He's got uh, 13 catches, that's now 14. He's been uh, averaging about 18 yards per catch, so he stays within his average. He's getting good protection here, Gerbeck is. Howard is the outside guy, goes down and just runs across the middle, zone coverage. Yeah, he hit that seam in the zone, and you have to have a feel for that as a receiver. As to where that is, you have to recognize that. There is an injured player down on the sideline, or I should say on the field, and it appears as though it is a badger, but I can't get a number right now. He's finally getting it's Greg up. Greg Thomas. Looks like Greg Thomas. Now that's who it is, Greg Thomas. And he walks off or actually trots off the field under his own power. And that's a good sign to see as you look at the scoring drive by the Wolverines. And Greg probably not too anxious to go over to the uh, sideline. As you see Desmond Howard, the man that scores this game's first touchdown on the third and nine. The Badgers thinking they might have had the Wolverines stop, but uh, not to be. So the Badgers uh, forced to play catch up here. And that's sometimes very difficult to do against a team the caliber of a Michigan squad. Back deep again, Troy Vincent. Carlson quickly trying to catch the Badgers napping. Vincent from his own five, straight up the middle, hurtling, and he, this time he advances the ball to about the 27-yard line. Michigan does a lot of trying to keep you off guard, the no huddle. And here again, it looked like they were going to huddle, and the next thing you know, Carlson's kicking the ball. Quick kickers. So the Badger offense with possession from their own 27-yard line, as you see Barry Alvarez on the sideline. And they need to generate a drive. They have to keep their offense on the field, and if they do that, they'll keep Michigan's offense off the field, and it becomes a, a battle of ball control, if you will. Yeah, uh, they feel that they've gone back to a more simplified offense uh, this week. Uh, they're going to do things. We're going to try to play within our abilities and skills. Yeah. They're going to have to get more running room. For the backs that time, as you see Dobris making the stop, and that was just a textbook hit by Dave Dobris, a freshman, redshirt freshman. You're talking about he was the, an all-stater in high school out of Mount Clemens, Michigan. Yeah. And a great lacrosse player in high school. He's probably the most inexperienced guy in the lineup right now. Second and nine. Lowry rolling to his left. In and out of the hands of Bill Williams. Williams was there. The pass was there. Catchable pass. Williams went up after it and couldn't pull it down. And see, you know, here you're putting yourself in a hole. You're third and nine now. And we had the opportunity to talk with Russ Jakes on Thursday. He said, you know, Let's get three or four yards on first down, three or four more yards on second down so we don't have a long situation on third down. And right now it's third and nine. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly right. They need, to, they need to be able to get themselves in a position where it's third and short, give this defense a chance to, re to rest because it's very hot down on this field. The Badgers from their own 28-yard line. Lowry straight drop back. Has time, looking, trying to find where he finds him, right at the 50-yard line. Tony Lowry with boys under pressure finds Tim Ware, and Ware, the littlest guy on the offense for Wisconsin, makes a big play. Well, I tell you now, uh, Tony Lowry twice has tended to go to the big man, the long guy, when he's had a short guy open. This is just uh, uh, a kind of a deep end pattern by uh, Timmy Ware. Tony goes, and you can see, well, you can't see on the monitor, but there's somebody else open, and I think it's Billy Williams that was open for the first down also. Well, a big play on 39 for Wisconsin. First down just shy of the 50-yard line. Bad exchange that time between 
Lowry and Raphael Robinson. Fortunately, Robinson able able to get the handle on the ball. So you hate to turn the ball over after you kind of generate a little momentum offensively. The Badgers now into Wolverine territory. Not a bad gain. Three yard pickup as number 32 checks into the lineup. Mark Montgomery and the coaches indicated to us Merritt, that uh, we might be seeing Mark Montgomery and maybe even Theo Carney. Another of the talented freshman running backs for Barry Alvarez. Yes, yes. Different types of running styles. Play fake. Lowry gets some pressure. Angling. Finds his tight end. Nice grab. What a pitch by Tony Lowry under pressure. He had a Wolverine draped all over him, but he found his man, Kerry Miller, who makes the catch. And Wisconsin now driving the ball. Well, that's, this is exactly what Russ Jakes wants to do. He said, we've got to have some patience. Uh, we've got to find a way to shorten this ball game, keep the clock running, play possession football, and keep it out of the Michigan offensive hands. And he feels that they can do that by passing and mixing it up with some inside running. And that way, they cut down on this Michigan rush. You talk about the rush. They got it in the form of Neil Simpson on that play, but Lowry fortunately got the ball off before Simpson arrived. First and 10 for Wisconsin. And some movement. Kevin Ellison moved to step too soon and that's going to push them five yards back and that's the thing that when you're playing a team the caliber of a Michigan you can ill afford to have the kind those kinds of mental mistakes. Well I tell you that's the kind of stuff that uh, makes old men out of coaches real quick because they have worked so hard on that in the last two weeks to make sure that these young kids keep their heads in the ball game. Well actually there's some movement by Chuck Bellin who's now in at the uh, tackle slot. Uh, Chuck's a guy who's coming off of the injured list who, who hasn't played much and we do use an unbalanced kind of cadence. And of course you you got to drive going right now and the adrenaline is pumping and everybody but you got to be patient and you got to keep your head in the ball game. First and 15 now following the five yard procedure call. Lowry motioning to somebody to perhaps move. Play fake has good protection. Good time. Now he's thinking about running it. He does. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. So about a five-yard pickup by Tony Lowry, second and ten. Well, not a bad decision by Lowry because there weren't a lot of open badgers in the secondary. Well, you can see you can see some maturity in Tony. Two weeks ago, Tony would have threw it up or tried to force it in there. So he's beginning to get a little more maturity with him. He's good, starting to make good judgments. He's got to breathe some fire in these guys' eyes now and make them believe that they can move this ball down into the end zone. Badgers quickly get to the line of scrimmage as Kevin Ellison checks out. Raphael Robinson bunched up at the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of running room that time for number 25 at the bottom of the pile. Steve Morrison, a linebacker out of Birmingham, Michigan. A uh, freshman. Now, one of the one of the uh, criticisms against uh, uh, the Wisconsin running backs right now has been that the line has been doing a pretty good job in opening up the holes, and the backs aren't running with their eyes open and taking that outside option. And, and guys like Carney and Montgomery uh, and Rory Lee have the running styles that would enable them to do that. They're kind of bouncers. They bounce in and they bounce outside. Big play for Wisconsin's offense, third and 10. And Lowry on the option. And he gets maybe two yards. And Michigan did a nice job of stopping that play as they brought in their nickel package. Now the Badgers will try to go for a field goal in the form of Rich Thompson. Thus far this year, four of six in the field goal category. His longest, 47 yards. So are the Mark Mangum hold. This is going to be about a 51-yarder, and it's uh, into the win. Mangum, a former quarterback, is the holder. Will it get there? No good. A little short and just to the left. So the Badgers miss on a scoring opportunity. Although they did a nice job of getting their defense off the field, they were able to drive, but you also got to drive and get points on the board. That's right. That's right. You've got to, you got to, when you get down there and you get an opportunity against a team like this, you've got to do two things. You've got to take, take advantage of the opportunities when they present themselves, and you've got to eliminate mistakes that will kill your drive. Well, you know, they're going first and 10. Uh, I forget exactly the, the yard line, 35 or so, and then they have the procedure call. Illegal movement. And uh, that really hurt them. That put it at first and 15, and they were kind of working at a deficit from that point on in that drive. So Michigan's offense comes out into the field. They've already got the play call from the sideline. 
as we approach the five-minute mark of the first quarter. Michigan on top, seven-zip. Gerback to his tight end, Diebolt. Diebolt makes the grab, about a seven-yard pickup. You know, this is really something that Gary Moeller, his first year as the Wolverine head coach, he calls the plays from the sideline. He develops the no-huddle offense. And he's done it just about all for Michigan, except cell programs. He was Bo's defensive coordinator. Then he goes to offensive coordinator. Then he goes to assistant head coach as well as offensive coordinator. Gerback finds Vaughn coming out of the backfield. First and ten, Wolverines. And, you know, Gerback is a different kind of Michigan quarterback than we've seen in the past. And the fact that they were kind of almost option quarterbacks. They stretched the run first. Now Gerback comes in. He can throw the ball. He can throw the ball. Gives him a whole different look. And that time, the flag flies, and the Wolverines, I think, go to the no-huddle. And here's a little Bo and Mo. Mo is out on the field trying to get the officials' attention. There he is. There's some of that fire from Bo. <laughs> Jump on them early, Mo. <laughs> you know, I had a chance to talk to him back in July about would he try to intimidate the officials the way that Bo did? He says, well, you know. But he, he, doesn't have, he doesn't have Bo's style. Bo had a style in and of himself. You know? <laughs> in your face style. <laughs> so a procedure called against Wolverines that incurs the wrath of Michigan's head coach. He's still a little mad about that. He needs no gum. That's what it is. Bo always had his gum. <laughs> He's out there, though. <laughs> Well, that sets the Wolverines five yards deeper, first and 15. I'll well, see if the Badgers can do something here now. Inside handoff. Look out. He's dangerous. Vaughn into the secondary. Good tackle by Troy Vincent. And a flag on the play. Vincent created maybe a touchdown. There's a flag at the line. It would appear to be a hold, and that's a big break for Wisconsin because Vaughn almost broke it for six. Holding Michigan, and that will probably make Moeller's blood boil that much more well you can you can if you notice something about the open field tackles on John Vaughn uh, this one and the one before that when they threw a short pass to him uh, people are reaching for him uh, right there and if you notice Troy Vincent just barely gets a hold of him on his and that's a very dangerous type of tackle with a guy like John Vaughn because if you get your head out there and you miss him you're in serious trouble because he's gone to the land of milk and honey Got to kind of get a hold of anything you can get a hold of and pull him down. Well, he has first and 25 now. You can see Gary Moeller's record at Michigan, of course, prior to Michigan and his second stint at Wolverines Post. He was a head coach for three years at Illinois. Throw back to the other way. Kind of a naked screen to Desmond Howard, and the Badgers did a nice job of defending that. Uh, they gave some yardage, but not a big chunk of yardage. And there is an injured player down for Wisconsin, and it appears as though it's Lamar White. Howard's numerical counterpart, that's who it is, Lamar White. And uh, there you see that trainer, Denny Helwig. Well, I tell you, the Badgers are doing a good job here. Now, they've been helped by a couple of mistakes on behalf of Michigan. Uh, but the Badgers are doing a good job of well, reading while he took on Dean Digman there. No one Dingman uh, got, <laughs> got him for that last play that he made. And speaking of injuries, while we have the opportunity, uh, we'd like to pass along our best wishes and uh, get well recoveries to Todd Orlando, a linebacker who underwent surgery to remove a disc at the top of the spinal column and fused a bone from his hip with a bone at the base of his neck. He was wrapped up by uh, one of the offensive on linemen for Wisconsin in a head-on collision. Knee. Second and 17 now for the Wolverines. They had a big play earlier on a third and nine. Gerback. And it's oh! almost intercepted. And it was clear sailing from Malvin Hunter. He had a touchdown. Inside handoff Vaughn. And a good tackle by Malvin, Malvin Hunter. Hunter. Moeller. In for the first time now, Eddie Ascona. Their hunter out of Montreal, Quebec. 38-yard average. 12 points thus far this year. A little wobbly spiral. Vincent's going to stay away from that one, and maybe that was not a wise decision. And on the retreat, maybe even a worse decision. <laughs> okay. 2:35 in the opening quarter, the Badgers trailing the Wolverines seven nothing, but deep in their own territory from their own four. First man through. And the second team All Big Ten player by the Associated Press. Another one of those guys that's all something, right? Lowry to his tight end. It's a game of confidence. That's the more exactly confidence right. you have, the, the more you'll 
operate in a positive. Tony Spaeth checks in. Batters will operate with one running back. Lowry rolling. Dumps it off to Spaeth. Spaeth across the 25 to about the 26 line. 45 seconds and counting down the first quarter. Michigan leading 7-0. The Badgers trying to drive in there and somehow tie this thing up. Robinson inside, straight ahead running room. Robinson. Timeouts or quarter changes can take the wind right out of your sails sometimes. Let's see if the Badgers can still keep it together here. Now they got trips down to the lower side here. That Caden's getting the Wolverines jumping a little bit there. And I don't know if he got the first down. About a foot to go for the first down. Trey Wellborn. Senior. He has been an outstanding one. Yep. Great ball player. Somebody wanted to some movement. Great punt by Brecky driving Trip Wellborn back. Wellborn inside his 15 on the retreat. Trying to get to the sideline. Pretty good for the day. His replacement, Tyrone Mahone. Vaughn. Cutting it back, staying on his feet, gang tackle, but not before he peels off about five and a half, maybe six yards. There you see the ability that it seems like for as long as I can remember about Michigan football, especially out of the tailback position. Need to be able to cut back, and they all have that ability to cut back, and Vaughn is no different. Derek Bunch, and he is going to be met. Gerback, play fake. Has time, and it's going to be caught. They gave it to him. Oh, that's an interesting call. All you got to have is one foot in bounds, and what a great catch. My only question on that one was whether or not he had possession of it when he went out. Let's see. Gerback with a good throw. And, it, well, it, does he get it? Uh, I think he, I don't think he. <laughs> Like we said, you know, you lose a Callaway and McMurtry, and you pick up a Howard and an Alexander, and there's no drop off. There's no drop off. These are two great young ball players. Great speed. Uh, they have good patience, good hands, as was illustrated right here. Both sophomores in eligibility, as is Gerbach. Tell me that Gary Moeller is not just salivating <laughs> profusely. Second and seven. Jared Bunch. Now he runs straight ahead, but not a lot of running room for the senior out of Ashtabula. The near side, number one, Derek Alexander to the far side, Mr. Howard. Third and about three. Allen Jefferson stopped. Coming from behind, Danny Batch. I'll tell you what, this is... As Kona, high punt. Vincent from his own 20. Met immediately. If he got beyond a hurry now, they're at five seconds on the 25 second clock. They do. Little delay to Robert Williams. Ellison also, also checks out. Once again, the Badgers milking that 25 second clock. They feel that's time that they take away from Michigan. Lowry gets pressured, scrambling, dumps it off. Underthrown for Tony Spaeth, but uh, Lowry did a nice job of. Well, let's see if Michigan sends uh, Walburn on this one. Trips to the near side. Lowry dumps it off. 18 seconds to go in this quarter. Wellborn, Wellborn coming in, averaging uh, just over 13 yards per return, which is 17th best in the country. The last time, Brick, I think, got away a 51-yarder. This time, Anna Wellborn makes a fair catch, and he had uh, no one for about eight yards. So the Wolverines from their own 37-yard line, and uh, they have a seven-nothing lead, and falling right away. But that he didn't get 100 yards last Saturday. He only got 89 versus Maryland after going 200 yards plus it's two consecutive Saturdays. Look out! They've got a man deep. The ball is overthrown, intended for Derek Alexander. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Troy Vincent, and he team split to the near side. Derek Alexander to the far side. Play fake. Gerback dumping it off to Vaughn. Incomplete. He would have been woefully short of the first down. Not a lot of difference. Not a lot of difference. Moe's a little bigger and a little younger. 
So as Kona in, Vincent should get a fairly good return from this. And Badgers are going to try to a low them. line drive punt. And there is uh, a preliminary flag down here. Face there. Uh, this could be a very big play for him. We need to. We need. We got to get a big play out of Troy Vincent. Uh, he led the Big Ten last year in punt returns. Very, very safe. It's good field position. Hey, see, field. And right now the Badgers got to be feeling good about this game because they're playing. They're playing with Michigan. The longer they hang, the better off they feel about themselves. The more confidence they generate. Robinson. Met at the line, and they're having some major problems getting off successful plays on first down. They've had little or no running. Fusion there. I don't think people know what they're supposed to do. And they call a timeout with two seconds on the 25-second clock. You go against Southern Cal in Columbus. You lose, lose big on the road. Don't lose in Columbus. Badgers got the trips now. Second and eight. Sun goes in behind the cloud. Lowry rolling to his right. He's got a man open in Lowry. Or in the Crawford now scrambling. Unloads. Did he get past the line? Yes, he did. There is a very, very costly penalty. That's a loss of down and the penalty to boot. Lowry threw the ball past the line of scrimmage. He had the marker right there in front of his eyes. Mental mistake. Mental mistake. Oh, oh wait a minute. First foul. First I thought foul. it was past the line. I'm glad I was wrong. A personal foul against Michigan. A mental mistake the other way. I don't know. Maybe somebody laid a late hit on Tony Lowry. When Markman finally gets things sorted out, uh, he is mic'd with the microphone. And let's see if we can hear his call Great rather than job. my missed call. I'm glad I was wrong, though. Here he is. That's uh, bat 500. All right, let's take a look at it and see what happens here. There's Tony. Well, he's still got room. Throws the ball. Three. I'm not too sure that was a. Well, Barry Alvarez will hit. take it. Yeah. First and ten now inside Michigan territory, and Rafael Robinson squirming for maybe two and a third ranked team in the country. You're trying to piece together a drive, and you're only down seven zip, and it's under seven minutes in the first half. And you probably won't see Theo in this drive. <laughs> Discussion sometimes <laughs> a better part of valor, right? And uh, another costly mistake, jumping off sides. Incision. And now there's some indecision on the behalf. And when it's game time, it's their time. That's right. Lowry running away from pressure. Dumps it off and thrown behind. Two badgers. Quarter. I had a feeling that Bo probably let his players know that. <laughs> they went on to win that game 24 0. Third and 14 now, big play time for the Badger offense. Lowry steps up into the pocket to his tight end. Gary Miller and Miller. Now let's see what they do here. Lionel Crawford is the up back. Look out here. Brecky. Uh-oh. They tried right to angle it out. Ooh, and he gets good, a good bounce. bounce. Good bounce. Henry Searcy down good there. Bounce. I thought he got it too high up in the air, but the ball angled out and if you will back there trying to create a little noise and distraction for Elvis as in Gerback. Devon trying to cut it back. Look out. Wrapped up there very nicely. Otherwise, it could have been a big gain. Sue got to stay home. Six yard pickup, second and four. Vaughn now to the other side. Vaughn into the secondary on his feet. Vaughn with Vincent on him, finally bringing him down. And Vaughn shows me some power. Third line, first and ten, following the big pickup by John Vaughn. As he marches toward the century mark in rushing. Here comes a blitz by Wisconsin. And the tackle made job by Malvin Hunter. Malvin Hunter. He's playing a game. Malvin. He had that knee on. First and 20 now, following the holding call against the Michigan offense. Gerback. And what a catch. Desmond Howard with a leaping grab going out of bounds. That's right. They pick up about nine yards in this play. Boy, is that pretty. It's a simple cut. Graybeck's got that timing down. Second and 11, nine-yard pickup. Little delay. Draw. Look out. Jefferson, one man to beat. Eddie Fletcher from behind Monroe. Monroe oh, trying to catch it. Otherwise, it's gone. 
last year because now Michigan's just going to play power football with them. And speaking of power, they handed their fullback, their most powerful runner, and Jared Bunch. Bunch, a 10-yard gain, a bunch of yards on that play. Jefferson in high school was uh, a 100-meter champion running a time of 10-3, and you saw a glimpse of his speed on the last play. Here's Jared Bunch. Again, the Badgers guilty of over-pursuing the play, and then Eddie Fletcher forced to try to wrap up Jared Bunch. Yeah, that's certainly a mismatch there. This drive started at their own nine-yard line. Jefferson running behind the massive line. Well, you know, Michigan now, Michigan has a distinct physical advantage over the Wisconsin line. Uh, they got that big 293 to 300-pound line, and now they're just going to come together inside of what we refer to as the red zone, and they probably call the blue zone. But they're just going to come together and play power football now, and they're just going to dare the Badgers to stop them. Uh, this is both football here that Mo has just followed in the footsteps of. Run the ball down the opposition's throat. Good play that time by number 57, Gary Casper. Well, they need that and many more like them to keep the Wolverines out of the end zone. You know, this has got to be fun, this no huddle if you're Michigan. Yeah. This is something different. They're probably one of the few teams in college football running this type of uh, alignment. Well, I'm sure the linemen love it because they don't have to run back and forth to the huddle and they just go and block whoever's in their well, area. They probably told Motor, we're not running back and forth <laughs> to the huddle. They're big enough to dictate that kind of policy. Vaughn inside, running behind the left side and Doring and Picasso, but they bunch it up. Sets up a third and about, oh, maybe a long six. Now they ran left, now look for them to maybe run right. Now this becomes a very critical play here. If they can shut them down and maybe get away with three three points, that's going to keep us in the ball game. Third and six. Gerback communicating. Crowds into it. Gerback. Little timing pattern. Touchdown. Greg Thomas never looked never at the looked. ball. Never looked. He had him covered like a blanket, but he didn't know where the ball was, and Derek Alexander did. This is, uh, I, I, I'll say this because this is almost a gift, uh, the way Gerback threw the ball up and Alexander just adjusted and came back. Greg was in perfect position to make the play on it, just didn't know where the football was. So the Wolverines drive the ball down the field via the run, but the big play is the pass from Gerback to number one, Derek Alexander, his first touchdown reception this fall. So Howard and Alexander, the two wide receivers for the Wolves, the kick is up, and it's good by Carlson, and just like that, the Wolverines drive 91 yards. And they get a touchdown to double their lead at 14 to nothing. Rick Thomas... Throws it out, and he just lobs the ball up. There's plenty of time with the hang time of that ball. Alexander knows where it is. Greg Thomas doesn't know where it is. All Greg's got to do is turn around or look up, and he's got himself an interception. Or at least knock the ball down. Or knock the ball down. Rory Lee is back deep for Wisconsin in place of Troy Vincent. Uh, they're going to see Rory Lee made a nice return late in the ball game against Temple. Carlson. Lee from his own two, a little juggle. Ooh. Hit hard on the play by Michigan special teamer Brian Townsend, who got down there in a hurry. And Rory stopped short of the 20-yard line, but there is a flag down on the play. Maybe an illegal block. That's what it is. Another mental mistake. There you see, you can read his lips. What happened? Well, let's see if we can see it on the monitor. You can see a good look at the roar. There's a block good by block Lynch. Lynch. Maybe Henry Searcy, I don't know. It's hard to tell on the monitor. Clipping on the return team. First and 10. Down in this territory. We'll see. And See, Robinson not hitting that line. He, he's kind of jitterbucking up to the line, waiting for the hole to ha happen, but uh, he's got to go up there and blast through that hole. Yeah. 
he's not uh, not running with his head up and he's not running with the option to to pick the open area and run to it and I think that's the thing that's been most frustrating to Russ Jakes right now is that our backs haven't demonstrated the ability to do that you know and if you're Michigan I might be trying to think of calling timeouts here to stop that clock maybe try for one more possession before the end of the half Lowry rolling to the near side throws up the field Crawford goes up makes it gonna unload oh. intercepted that's what you didn't want to happen right there. Todd Plate with the interception, his first of the year, and Michigan having great field position. The kiss of death. Now, this is not a good decision here. Uh, he sees his man, but everybody else knows he sees his man. It's kind of a lame duck pass there, and he throws it right to uh, Todd Plate. Plate. He saw Bill Williams, but Williams was five yards away from that pass. Yeah, and he had three Michigan guys surrounding him. So you're, you've uh, set the table for Michigan is what you've done here. You're down 14 zip. They're going to go long. Look for Alexander or Howard. And that pass was overthrown intended for Vaughn. And uh, what does he can to maintain some momentum going into the Michigan State game? I just read his lips. He said, go deep. Yeah. And he did. <laughs> he goes to John Vaughn. A little dump off wrap. So scripting it goes out. And then it comes in Rob Darty. 6'6, 296, sophomore. All right. You just, know, a little drop off there. Just a puppy, right? <laughs> out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. Gerback. He's got the screen. Devon. And he ran right past three defenders. Right. Tom and the fog next Friday and Saturday night if it's this warm. Inside handoff to Vaughn and a good play by Brendan Lynch. 88. Well, the Badgers are going to have to be careful here because I think Michigan's going to put it up. They go to the far sideline and some miscommunication that time between Gerback and Desmond. A chance to run a playoff. American by football news. 13 14. 1989. Was their leading score? They'll spot the ball at the 28-yard line, 38-yard boot for Carlson. Chip shot into the wind. Your chip shot, not mine. <laughs> the kick is up, and he drives it, and it's good. So the, or the interception from Tony Lowry resulting and three more points before the end of the first half. So the Wolverines go to the locker room, leading the Badgers 17 nothing in uh, two big plays. Otherwise, maybe this is a three nothing ball game. Eric. That's correct. I think the Badger defense played well. You made a couple of mistakes and it cost us. And the interesting thing is you take a team which has historically been a running team had to score through the air twice. But that shows you their depth and their versatility. So the end of the first half finds third ranked Michigan on top of Wisconsin 17 to nothing. Elvis Gerbach, his fifth touchdown pass of the year, and they had a chance to stop it, but unfortunately, Desmond Howard was like that wily coyote, elusive, and he gets the touchdown. That puts the Wolves on top, 7-0. And then late in the second quarter, he goes to his other wide receiver, Derek Alexander, and Greg Thomas has Alexander clover, covered like a blanket, but he never looked for the ball. But Alexander had the ball all the way and the touchdown and then a late interception before the half led to a field goal by Carlson and that's the 17 Michigan points. They've done a good job in keeping uh, John Vaughn down. I mean he's only got 46 yards but they've given up a lot of uh, uh, some couple of big plays in the air and uh, number 21 Desmond Howard back deep for the Rich Thompson line drive kick off and it didn't make the length of the field. Goes sailing out of four and three slate. Return to Michigan in the following season. Thompson angling it. Gets a very good kick. And on the retreat is Howard across the 20. And you get a glimpse of his speed because I want to tell you, he covered about 25 That's yards and about two seconds. You don't teach this on a practice field. Either you've got it or you don't. That's right. And Desmond Howard has got it. If I'm the opposing coaches in the Big Ten, I look at this Michigan team and their skill position players, Vaughn, sophomore, Gerback, sophomore, Howard, sophomore, Alexander, sophomore. 
Oh, my. And Jared Bunch just completely spun off the would-be tackle by number 90, Pat McGettigan. And McGettigan, I don't know if he knew what hit him other than just a, uh, a runaway piano. <laughs> watch this. Watch. He, he hits McGettigan and just co totally spins away from him. There he goes. And there goes McGettigan. A lot of, you know, he's a competitive weightlifter. He's got a lot of upper body strength. Plus, he's a big kid. So you kind of got to forget, have yourself in a position to make a hit on him. He yeah. spun away from Madronowski as well. And then finally, Thomas had to stop the, the freight train. Five-yard gain. Gerback throws back. And running away from the would-be tackle of Tyrone Mahone. And there's a late flag. And I don't know if it would be a late hit or not. Eyes playing tricks on him. First and 10 for the Wolverines from their own 36 yard line. They lead, they have the ball. Gerback, now look out, Vaughn to the outside, trying to get to the sideline. Vaughn, a foot race. He tried to cut it back past Roy Vincent, and he really steamed Roy Vincent on the would be tackle, but Vaughn feels off another big game. Well, I think one of the things that you see here is that Vaughn uh, not only has a great deal of quickness, and here, here we've been successful at containing him, but he gets outside Greg Thomas there, and then there's nobody else to contend with him. Then it becomes a foot race, and Troy Vincent has the angle on him, but you can see he's got quite a bit upper body strength also. Just moved up to 81 yards in 12 rushes. He's on his average, 6.8. Yeah, he's well on his way to 100 yards, it appears. Vaughn trying to cut it back, and he got hit hard up, up on top by Thomas, but not before Vaughn got about six yards. He's a little slow in getting up now. He finally bounces up. Now, just a reminder, he had 288 yards against UCLA, 201, 201 yards against Notre Dame. Notre Dame doesn't give up 200 yards of the ground against a team, let alone a single player. And this guy, a converted defense is back. He's replaced on this particular play by Alan Jefferson. He's a slow guy. He's only been clocked at 10-3 in the 100 meters. Jefferson met at the line, trying to spin away, and good job that time of... Good tackling there by Brendan Lynch, I think. And, uh, gang tackling Jefferson. Third and four now following the, the hit by... Just, just a power play up the middle. Lynch Lynch gets company. in and makes the initial tackle, and then he gets a little help from his friends. Full house backfield. Wishbone. Jefferson and Vaughn in there, along with Jared Bunch. Gerback calls a timeout just before the... 25 second clock at a full house backfield. Garrett Bunch the fullback. Jefferson Vaughn the tailbacks, or the halfbacks, if you will. Wisconsin moving at the last minute. Jefferson will be stopped. About a yard shy of the first down. However, they did run the ball toward the middle of the field. So if they don't decide to go for it on fourth down, they give Carlson the place kicker. Pretty good angle at trying to add three or more points to their total. Good surge that time good by surge. Don Davey. And Kurt Madanowski and uh, Greg Thomas came in to make the tackle. So it'll be a 38-yard field goal attempt by Carlson. Kick is up. And it is good. So Carlson converts. The Badgers keep them out of the end zone. But Michigan gets half of a touchdown. So they add to their lead at 20 to nothing. Well, I think also, uh, Van, uh, uh, once again, when you talk about the, the teams that are nationally ranked and a team that could potentially be the number one team in the country right now, that uh, when they get down inside the 30-yard line, they usually walk away with some points. Uh, and I think every time that Michigan's been inside the 30-yard line today, they've scored. They have a lot of ways to beat you. And this, this offense of theirs... One of the most proficient I've seen in, in a long time from a Michigan squad. They, I mean, in the past, you think of Michigan teams under the direction of Bo Schimbeckler. Uh, you thought they had the ability to run the ball, and this team has the ability to run the ball, but with a Gerback at quarterback, along with skilled people like Howard and Alexander, they can also pass, and uh, that adds another element 
to their offense and makes the run that much more effective when they can pass the ball that way. And they also have backs in and uh, in, uh, in and, 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 and Vaughn that can also catch the football. Back deep, Rory Lee. He awaits the kickoff from J.D. Carlson. Lee gets a chance for the return from his own five. Across the 15, the 20. Hurtling his way up to about the 25, maybe even the 26-yard line. Rory Lee. Well, let's see what Wisconsin's offensive people were able to do with, during the halftime break. Well, you can see Tony's stats. He's 6 for 13, 76 yards, one interception. I think you'll probably see him put the ball up more this half. We know we can throw the ball against Michigan. There's no question about that. Rafael Robinson gets the call at the tailback slot as we see Wisconsin on offense for the first time in the third quarter. Badgers down 20 to nothing against the nation's third rated team. Lowry gets some pressure. Looks one way, looks back the other. Finds Spaeth thrown ever so slightly behind Tony Spaeth. And Spaeth had to go back around to try to pull it in. And a little bit low, and he couldn't hang on. So the Badgers failed to convert on first down. Now it sets up a second and ten. A yeah, little bit, a little bit behind him. Tony could have had himself a little bit more under control coming across there. That was not an, an uncatchable ball. That's the difficult thing when you're playing a team the caliber of Michigan. You have to do everything almost picture perfect. That's right. You got to do it right. <laughs> That's the way they do it. That's why they're third ranked in the country, I guess. Here comes a blitz. Lowry. And nice job of staying on his feet by Lionel Crawford. Crawford picks up about seven yards on the play. Making the stop at the bottom of the pile for the Wolverines is Dave Dobreth. And he was a little slow in getting up, and he's going to be helped off the field as we see the replay. It's just uh, Lionel just runs to the spot again. The Michigan's in the zone and uh, turns around. Tony throws the ball to him, picks up an extra couple of yards. Uh, the one guy on the, in the passing game that hasn't been heard from today is uh, Billy Williams Jr., uh, which was, I think, quickly emerging as Wisconsin's go-to guy, but he hasn't gotten a pass in the first half yet. said Dobrik took a shot on the plate. He is helped to the sideline. His backup is Steve Morrison, 6'3", freshman. Don't see that too often. Lowry rolling to his right, running away from the pressure. Now dumps it off. He's got a man long, but he threw it way out of bounds. He was looking for Bill Williams and some of the Michigan faithful, I think, uh, hoping to draw a grounding call. Third and five, you got to convert. They don't do it. In comes Brecky. Well, if he, he drops back here. See, this is where they, you know, the lack of a running attack right now. Michigan loads up for the pass. Yep. And Williams had to be a secondary receiver on that one because uh, with a third and five situation, he was 34, 40 yards downfield. Wellborn awaiting the punt. And Wellborn, boy, he's had a rough day fielding punts. 40 yard of the Brecky punt, and I don't know if he he just went down trying to field it. Just well, I think that I think that sun might be a factor out there today. It's a very bright sun, and there is a little wind blowing. Uh, doesn't look like most of these punters, uh, punt receivers, want to receive that ball for some reason. Vincent had trouble when he was receiving from that end of the field. Well, now you call on, upon your defense again to somehow hang in there with this, this potent Michigan offense. We've not received the attendance figures yet, but I got to believe they've got to be up and over that 60,000 mark. Nice house. Nice house. Inside running room, Jared Bunch, and he maybe picks up six yards on the play. Bunch coming in, averages just over four yards a carry. He's yet to score a rushing touchdown this fall, although he has a receiving Wilson touchdown. Wilson off tackle, they zone block again, turn out. And, uh, 
for a guy that's almost 250 pounds, he gets into the secondary in a hurry. <laughs> that's right. I'm sure I'm going to have a, 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 an interesting conversation with my son after this game. He's been carrying Ding Dingman all day. <laughs> Here's a backup tailback in Ricky Powers, and uh, Ricky uh, didn't have a lot of running room, and then he made matters worse for himself when he tried to retreat. Powers, a freshman, consensus high school All-American, the number one player in the country by the Dallas Morning News. Good play by Don Davies again. You know, Dave Davies is getting some penetration. And as a consequence, slowing down that and getting given his other defenders an opportunity to fill third and one you think we'll see Mr. Bunch no doubt about it first and ten Jared Bunch in the Wolverines Jared Bunch. So the Wolverines keep the drive alive on the third down conversion. Now, you know, uh, I had mentioned this earlier, the Badgers are starting to slip into this mold that we tend to find ourselves in the third quarter where they allow this uh, uh, visiting team to come in here and control the ball for the majority of the third quarter. And that's exactly what Michigan's doing right now. Well, they've got their third string tailback in, Ricky Powers, and I'm sure just trying to give him some work, some experience in a Big Ten game and you know hey Powers is a heck of a player like I said you don't see too many freshmen playing for the Wolverines he scored 28 touchdowns in a season as a high school junior had over 2,000 yards rushing as a high school senior guys don't get that in a career he had it one year second and three Powers again cuts it back he's into the secondary and he just did get tripped up by Greg Thomas. Otherwise, he might have been gone for the TD jaunt. Simple trap. Now, they just took out John Vaughn, who's 4-2 in the 40. They put in Ricky Powers, who's 4-4 in the 40. This is, a, this is a trap. He just cuts in behind the block, and there's a lot of space there. Nice block by the tight end, Diebold. Yep. Nice save there by Greg Thomas. Diebold's only 6'5", 250. He's small in comparison to Skrepenik, Dingman. Picasso, Elliott. Well, uh, that was just bunch just never that play never got off the, the drawing board the way that Gary Moeller had designed that one. Now he's calling the play. There you see him. They take their time. And now they're they're huddling up. And Bunch goes to the sideline. You can feel the field vibrate when he goes to the sideline. <laughs> Second and seven. They're in their one back set now. Let's see if he's going to put it up. Straight drop back, one on one coverage. He's got him. And a nice reception over the shoulder by Desmond Howard. Oh, my. He is only a sophomore. I think the NFL could be calling Mr. Howard before it's all said and well, done. They're certainly blessed with two two very talented receivers. He just keeps his eye on the ball. Once again, the Badgers don't know where the ball is. Uh, Fletcher had good field position with him, and then he turned a little pressure up the middle there. He looks and he turns back and he loses Howard. Howard keeps his eye on the ball. That could easily have been six. Troy Vincent is shaking up for the Badgers over on the near sideline. And Vincent, uh, I don't know if he's maybe just got a cramp. It is warm down on the field. And maybe that's another reason why Gary Moeller is, uh, is spelling some of his players. Yeah, it looks like he's got a cramp, like he's trying to kind of shake it off. Well, the Badgers have already lost Lamar White in their secondary. And now Vincent is out for at least this particular play. So now you start to patch work things up against this kind of an offense asking for trouble first and goal from the four out of the wishbone again Vaughn and touchdown Vaughn simply powered his way over Greg Thomas he carried Thomas in for the touchdown Seven 
yard drive they had here. I'd say you start looking ahead to next Saturday, but that could be a most interesting battle between Michigan and Michigan State. Well, Michigan State right now is losing to Iowa in the fourth quarter, so it could be a very interesting uh, uh, emotional game, as it always will be. That game is in Ann Arbor. The point after is up, and it's good. So the Wolverines up at the 27 to nothing, and now, plain and simple, it, you know, you've got to issue a challenge to your offense to generate something here, and thus far, to Michigan's defensive credit, uh, they have done nothing. It's just a power play right up the middle here. He, he just literally runs over. Uh, and that was close. <laughs> his elbow was down. Yeah, his elbow's that, not his knee. That was close. Now, I tell you, you know, he's he got to be the elastic man here to score on that one. I don't think that was a touchdown, but they gave it to him anyway. So It's Michigan, right? Yeah, it's Michigan. And you can't tell me that in the back of, uh, of the mind of an official, they know that this is Michigan, this is Wisconsin, and, uh, you know, they're not supposed to stay in the same field with one another. Yeah. So much for objectivity, right? Well, you know. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. You have to make your own break. 70-yard drive covering almost three and a half minutes. Vaughn finishes it off, and I wonder if we'll see Vaughn for the last time, although maybe Moeller might like to get him another 100-yard afternoon. Coming in, he was a nation's leading ground gainer. And uh, unless he, he has a couple of more productive runs, I dare say that maybe he'll just rest him. You don't want to run the risk of getting him hurt for Michigan State next Saturday. Yeah. Rory Lee awaiting the kickoff by Carlson. Carlson maybe been the busy, busiest man here in the third quarter. Lee from the six. To the 20, going to the outside, to the 30. And he's ridden out of bounds at about the 31 yard line. Not a bad return by the freshman Rory Lee out of Dixmoor, Illinois. Looks like he got a little burner there on his shoulder. It's a good run by Roy. Pops up. Now, Roy's one of these kind of guys that can pop, pop to the outside. He's got good peripheral vision. You can see a good example of it here. This is the kind of uh, uh, ball carrying that they're going to look for from these incoming freshmen. Because that's the kind of defensive offensive blocking that uh, that the Badgers do and they need to have people that can pop up in there and have the speed to get the ball to the outside Lance Dotton drove him out of bounds so the Badgers have the ball just across the 30 yard line at about the 31 first and 10 they set up out of the eye Lowry on over the middle to Crawford nice catch the ball was right there as was Lionel Crawford Crawford went up made the reception Lionel's having a pretty good day I think he's had about, what, three catches, maybe yeah. four? Yeah. Good time, good throw. Pretty simple game when you execute like that. Gets good protection from the, uh, from the, from the offensive line. Goes the ball, goes up, catches the ball in his hand, brings it down, and hung, hangs on to it. Good concentration by Lyon. From the 47, play fake, Lowry. And he finds Crawford again. Making the hit, Beta Murray, the free safety. Now, Wisconsin moving the ball with a lot of success here, but Michigan is really playing off of these guys. Well, Michigan's got to be letting up a little bit. You know, they got a 27-point lead. This is a good throw because he had to throw over the, uh, the up man and throw into that hole between the, the other DB, Murray, and Lionel makes a good catch. He Good just, concentration. He just cleared the outstretched reach of David Key yep. and got it to Crawford. So while Williams has been shut out thus far, Lionel Crawford has come in and picked up the slack. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Lowry eats it. Tripped up on the play by number 92, Mike Evans, a senior out of Roxbury, Massachusetts, a former walk-on. And in 1989, he was honorable mention all Big Ten player. Had 10 sacks last year, third in the Big Ten. Born in the Virgin Islands. Probably feels like he's in the Virgin Islands right now. <laughs> <laughs> Only there's it's no true. sea here. There's Lake Mendota or Monona or Wabisa, <laughs> whatever it is over there. I... So a loss of four on the sack to Lowry. Second and 14. They show blitz again. Now they back out of it. Lowry looking for where overthrows it. And Lowry was hammered on the play by Martin Davis. Davis. 
240 pounds of lean, mean fighting machine. And Tony Lowry was wearing his number. Third and 14 for Lowry, and there are some major problems here as they try to get their alignment set. He gets it off just before the clock winds down. To Tony Spaeth, Spaeth will be short of the first down by about five and a half yards. There is a flag down on the field. Waiting for the official preliminary call, indicating whether or not it's against Wisconsin or Michigan. Against Wisconsin. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan declines it. If you want to give them third down over again or not. Now they're explaining all of the options to T.J. Osman, their nose guard. Well, don't take it. What do I know? <laughs> About as much as you can fit on the head of a small pin, right? <laughs> Although I did call the right run to Jared Bunch there in third and short. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, one for 25 today. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> anyway. I'll get you the Class A ball. <laughs> So it's third in a large piece of real estate. 19 to be exact. Lowry looking for Crawford. He had him. Whoops. And there is a fumble after Spaeth made the reception. And who got it? There's no indication as to Michigan ball. Michigan ball. Spaeth didn't hang on to it. Tony Lowry had flying off Crawford, and as we've said before, it's very easy for us to sit up here and spot guys that are open and guys that are that are not. But Lionel Crawford was downfield and more in a position to get the yardage for a first down than Tony Spaeth was. Well, let's take a look at this one. Tony's actually the short man. I think he's the second receiver. I mean, they're, they're playing. Crawford is in the seam of that zone. I think that was a hit by Martin Davis, I think, and Todd Plate. Plate's come in and laid out a couple of big time hits. So the Wolverine offense back out on the field following the fumble by Spaeth. And we might see some wholesale substitutions here with under six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Michigan cheering section down there. While they are outnumbered, they are rather vocal and they have started their cheer of Let's Go Blue. I'm just thankful this game is not in Ann Arbor where we don't have to hear Hail to the Victors. Hail to the Victors. Well, I tell you, for 100,000 people, that's one of the more quieter stadiums in the Big Ten. Inside handoff, the first time we've seen Bernie Laggett, number 40. Sophomore. He played as a freshman. Out of Colorado Springs. You know, they've done some some recruiting all over the country. I mean, just in addition, and they have a, a nice area that's just down the road from them in Detroit, but the, you know, they've gone to North Carolina, they've gone to Texas, they've gone to Colorado. They've Another blue chipper. 49 TDs broke uh, Heisman Trophy with Terry Miller's record, Colorado. Inside handoff to Powers, and he's still on his feet, has the first down, gets it almost to the 40-yard line. They'll spot it inside the 41, maybe closer to the... Well, here, here you see zone blocking at its best. Uh, they just take the man that comes into their zone, and they take him either way, and the back runs to the open daylight, and there's a good example of how the hole opens up, runs with his head up, Pretty easy when you can do it like that. First and ten for the Wolverines.
Powers ran by and still on his feet. That was a loss and he turned it into about a nine yard gain. Melvin Tucker had him stopped initially. Well, I think the Badgers got our uh, playing a freshman linebacker in there right now. Yusef Burgess, number 98. Well, that was Greg Thomas, but I think Tucker's in here too. Yep. Uh, once again, there's good penetration by uh, Don Davies. Slows that play up a little bit. Gives the rest of the backers a chance to fill and get the tackle. Here's Ricky Powers. Five rushes for 41 yards. Not a bad average. Yep. Eight yards per carry. Powers again. Powers into the secondary across the 20. Hits Eddie Fletcher inside the 10. Down to about the six-yard line. Ricky Powers Ricky shot Powers from behind by Malvin Hunter. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're Gary Mulder, you're, you're you're licking your chops. Yeah, this is just uh, this is just good running. Once again, zone blocking, power, good strong power, bad tackle there. Just he's just strong. Alvin comes in and makes a tackle. Plenty of depth. Oh, do they ever? They don't drop off. <laughs> now they're in the wishbone. Inside, and Greg Thomas against Vaughn, and he pretty much. Uh, Tackle him like he was wrapping up a steer and getting ready to hawk time or something. You'll find Michigan tends to when they get inside the 20 yard line, they'll they'll set up and go into that wishbone and just kind of trade power football. Well, Bo might be gone on the sidelines, but a lot of his uh, tactics remain. Yeah. More things change, the more they remain the same. It's hard to argue with the success rate that Bo Schimbacher had. The first 20 pages of their media guide devoted to Bo Schimbacher. But as uh, Gary Moeller told me, he says, my name is on the outside of the coach's door. Oh. Touchdown wide open. Somebody missed an assignment there as Desmond Howard gathers in the TD. Somebody missed an assignment because. Uh, I think Torrey Vincent, he caught Troy kind of sleeping on that one. He just, just a quick close pattern. And uh, Troy hardly moved on that one. And it was, it was a done deal before he got a chance to react. Howard gathers in another. TD toss. This Badger defense has got to be getting tired right now because they've been on this, uh, been on the field three quarters of this quarter. Well, the last thing that, if you're Barry Alvarez, you wanted to see was to have the game deteriorate like this. Yeah. But at this point, like you said, their defense is probably very fatigued at this point. And you don't want to start getting into finger pointing. Here it is. It's just a quick post pad. It's a slam. As you can see how open he is, and there's nobody by him, and I think he just made a quick step to the right and came back left and just kind of temporarily froze uh, Troy Vincent. See, yeah, you see him made a quick, quick out step and then just went inside on Troy, and when you're down in there that tight, you move, you make one bad move, you're beat, and that's what happened when he kid as quick as, as Desmond Howard. You know what's scary? You got under three minutes left in the third quarter, and it's 34 to nothing. Yeah. And what hurts Wisconsin is the fact that Michigan only travels with 60 players. It's not like they can go down to their three and four deep at this ball game, Ben in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Well, I think also is that the uh, it's, it's pride time uh, now. The I offense has got to come out and give this defense a chance to rest. Uh, because when you get tired late in the game like this is when people tend to get hurt. Here's a good look at Desmond Howard. And he's got a million dollar smile on his face, and why not? <laughs> he's had a million dollar day. Rory Lee at the five had some problems with the sun. Pat <laughs> Maloney and Mike Nadlicki making the stop for the Wolverines. Well, one of the things that uh, Offense uh, wanted to do, Jake's wanted to do today was just keep it simple. They've worked on this uh, for two weeks now. Keep the clock moving, give the offense, the defense a chance to rest and get some sustained drive going by doing something on first and second down so you don't always find yourself in a third long situation. Does that tell you something? 
Oh boy. Yeah. Tells you he hasn't been able to carry out his game plan. Lowry going to run. Trying to pick up a block, but uh, Tony Space was too far downfield. But Lowry taking what the defense gives you. He had nobody open, so there are a lot of times you just got to tuck it under and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from there. He's getting a little pressure from the outside. No coverage because Michigan still got pretty much most of their first team uh, defensive backfield in there. You can see Trip Wilborn getting a tackle there. So you just kind of got to take what they give you right now. First or second and eight, I should say, second and two. Shovel pass to Lionel Crawford. Stop in his track by Brian Townsend, backup outside linebacker. His brother Jesse played at Purdue from 75 through 77. So that looked like a play that might have worked, but uh, had it not been for Mr. Townsend, because he was the guy that stayed home. Stayed home and did his job. I can't help but believe they're also running some plays right now to give Iowa something else to look at and, and practice for next week. I think they might be running some plays just to generate some confidence for themselves. Yeah. Don't worry about Iowa until the time comes. Williams with his first reception has the first down. Gets out of bounds, stopping the clock. Mark Montgomery coming in, replacing Raphael Robinson. on the Badger sidelines here. They're trying to get Spaeth in. Crawford wants to go in. Nobody's sure who's going to go in. Fortunately, the official had stopped the 25-second clock. They had a problem with marking the ball on the sideline. Under a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Lowry scrambling. Sacked from behind, making the play initially was Brian Townsend. He got a piece of Lowry's jersey enough to slow him down. And really, uh, you can see where Lowry's pads are exposed there. Townsend got him from behind, just yanked a handful of jersey. And uh, Tony, strength would not be one of his attributes. And he went down. Well, Townsend has come in and, uh, and made a couple of big plays here. He's in the substitute for uh, Martin Davis right now. You see any drop off there? No, nope. no <laughs> drop off whatsoever. I had to think that they had Desmond Howard and Alexander on backups last year to Callaway and McMurtry waiting in the wings. And there's a flag just as the ball was snapped over the middle. Crawford, what a catch and what a hit. But I think the play will be nullified. That's too bad because there is a super play by Lionel Crawford. Some movement and it's going to bring it back. You can't do anything positive for the sake of shooting yourself in the foot. Illegal procedure. Well, you know, you're at that point in the ball game now where concentration starting to lapse a little bit. It's a good pattern. It's a good, this is a good pass by Tony Lowry. He's got to get the ball over Wellborn right in the hole again. Great concentration by, uh, uh, by LC. Holds on to the ball. Took a lick as a result of it. Six men on the line. Of Third Wellborn. Looking at it all the way. He's having a good day. Certainly is. You know, it's good to see him developing some confidence against a team of this caliber and with a secondary as good as Michigan has. So, cancel the big play. Now it's a second and 17. Lowry moved from the pocket, sacked from behind. Alex Marshall and Townsend. Alex is a backup outside linebacker. They got both their backup outside linebackers in there now. That's the end of the third quarter of play. So the Badgers move to the other end of the field and they face a major third down, third and 23. So after three, Michigan 34, Wisconsin nothing. The crowd is still here. 
They're still staying to watch the game, and the students, uh, the bleacher creatures, have done well today. Third and 23, Lowry going back the other way. Oh, and they're going to call interference against the Michigan Wolverines secondary in the form of David Key. He came in over the top of Tim Ware. Well, this is the largest crowd since a couple of years ago. They beat the Iowa game last year when they had 62,000 plus, so they, they surpassed that this year. This is uh, this is kind of a street pattern. Tony looks back at Tim. Tim is open here, a little underthrown. Probably wouldn't have catch, wouldn't probably wouldn't have been a catchable ball, but it was a good call. He did come over the back line. So a break for Wisconsin. We have not said that too many times this afternoon. Tim, I don't think Tim Ware's caught a pass today either. Has I don't he? believe so. Bill yeah, Markman, a great ventriloquist. Did you see him? You never saw him move his lips <laughs> inside and <off. laughs> And the Badger still cannot run the ball. I mean, that's Plum split to the near side, Bill Williams to the far side. They dump it off to Ware, who makes the reception. He gets out of bounds and maybe a three yard timing pattern between Lowry and Bill Williams. And I'm sure that Trip Wellborn wants to break one. He has not had, to Wisconsin's credit, he's not had an opportunity to run back a punt per se. Brecky well, hangs one out, and he's calling for a fair catch. I think Trip just says, get me out of here, get me to Ann Arbor for next Saturday in Michigan State. 36-yard boot for Brad Brecky coming in. Brecky averaging uh, about. There you see Gary Moeller. He's called the play. Now, Michigan is huddling in the second half for the most part here. Ken Solom in at quarterback. And the Wolverines begin to go to their two deep. They have been doing a lot of that thus far here in the second half. Solom out of Canyon Country, California. He threw only three passes in 89. Hand off and trying to make the cutback with Bernie Laggett. And he picked up, picks up about three yards maybe. Laggett lost his shoe and he's going to have to come out of there. Well, it's interesting that uh, the, they haven't worked Kenny Solom into the no huddle offensive scheme yet. Uh, yeah, but even Gerback was working out of the huddle yeah. here in the second half. I think they pretty much made their statement. Yep. Let's go back to conventional style football now. Solemn dumps it off to Ricky Powers. Ricky Powers to the outside. And I thought Barry Alvarez is going to be called upon to make a stop there. Gary Casper among those running powers out of bounds. This is just a simple what what is a swing pattern, which we used to call a banana pattern. They just get Ricky out there and get him isolated on the linebackers and try to capitalize on his speed. Picks up a nice game. First and 10 for the Wolves. Inside handoff to Powers. Goes straight up the gut. He's hit by Tyrone Mahone and Robert Newell, who was in there at linebacker. Uh, this is just good, good trench fighting going on right now between both of these lines. Uh, they do zone blocking again, and they just let Powers run where he wants to run, pick his hole. Michigan's too deep in an offensive line. Also, play fake, going to the outside, making the juggling catch, avoiding the tackle. Number seven, Alfie Birch, a red shirt freshman out of Warren, Ohio. He didn't play football in high school until he was a junior. All-state basketball player from Warren, Ohio. This is just a little flare pattern. Alfie didn't wrap uh, by Greg Thomas. Makes a turn. 
What's it all about, Alfie? Right? <laughs> what they call him. <laughs> they just keep coming in with them. Uh, they're third and fourth deep. Might play most teams head-to-head uh, -head in this country. Probably have a good chance to beat them. Powers the ball carrier. He picks up about a handful. And that clock cannot move fast enough for the Badgers. We see Sean Wilson warming up over on the sideline for Wisconsin. I see Lee Krieger is now in a nose for the Badgers also. I think that's the first time we've seen him today. Well, Dan McCartney, defensive coordinator, is still waiting for somebody to come up there and, and claim that position. That's such a critical position in this defense. Powers just biding his time trying to pick a hole. And at the bottom is Vincent, at the top is Krieger. Third and two for the Wolverines. At about the 40-yard line, 11, 22 and counting. Car Carlos Flowers also in the game too now, a defensive end. He's a freshman out of Pontiac, Illinois. Allen Jefferson up and over, first and ten, as he ran right by Brendan Lynch. Okay. Here's, here's, here's Lee Krieger, number 61, in there. See how they just bone, zone block, and block down. Mark Malia is the backup center. Just a little guy, 6'6", 288 pounds. No, Malia is 6'2", 260. Oh, excuse me, that's right. And they're missing Steve Everett. <laughs> and he's big, 6'6", about 275. Many believe maybe one of the finest centers in the country. Great football. Look player. out, look out, Jefferson, the A-train. Inside the 20 yard line, down to about the 19. Boy, does he hit the hole in a hurry. There he is. Tidy just blocks out and he just runs inside. Big hole there. He's there and he's gone. Eddie Fletcher came diving in to make the stop, but uh, not before Mr. Jefferson picked up a hunk of yards. Think they'll throw it anymore? They're trying to get some adjustment here. Inside handoff, Jefferson. Newer Sharp checks in. They pull out Krieger along with Maternowski. Allen Jefferson, 10 carries, 8 yards per carry. Second and five for the Wolves. Jefferson and Laggett in the backfield. Split behind. Solemn, the quarterback. All three reserves. Laggett cuts it back. Down to about the seven-yard line. Boy. Okay, that is the line right now. It's just... Uh, these are the backups, Mary. Yeah. These are the backups. This is... Uh, well, you know, let's go down. Brian Wallace, there left you tackle, 6'4". Oh, I just see him. They just wall it off. And he just hits in there straight, straight and curls it back. So you got that kind of talent, both in the running backs and, in, and up front in the line. Uh, you just create a hole and let the back run to daylight. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. Full house backfield. Powers to the outside. He might get six. Foot race, touchdown. Ricky Powers. And it was a foot race between Powers and Eddie Fletcher. And Powers has got 4-4 speed in the 40, and there was no doubt about it, 12 was going to beat 7. That was a clear mismatch there. That's just foot speed. And they are into the 40 range now. And the Michigan pennant blowing in the breeze. They could be flying another championship banner in Ann Arbor this fall. Well, everybody predicts us that this is their year to go win their third Big Ten championship. Outright championship, yep. which has never been done before. The three peak. That's what they're calling for in Ann Arbor. And from what we've said here today, I think who's to argue with them? 
Well, and then what we've heard from around the Big Ten, a couple of surprises, and, you know, Veda Murray told me that the cards are in their favor because of the fact that all of their big games are in Ann Arbor with the exception of Ohio State, which is in Columbus at the end of the year. Let's take a look at it there. There's some penetration by Patrick Thompson, and then it's just a foot race. 4-4 speed wins out there. Well, they go across the 300-yard mark in uh, total offense, and they got to be close to that in terms of ground yards. Just a power sweep to the right. Locked down on the inside, and then they just use power speed to get to the outside, and then he just goes into the end zone. Well, listen to these sizes. From left tackle to right tackle, their backups, Brian Wallace, 6'4", 270. Doug Skeen, 6'6", 288. Both sophomores in eligibility. Mark Malia, only a freshman in eligibility, 6'2", 260. The guard is Paul Manning, 6'4", 250, a redshirt sophomore. And then the tackle is Rob Doherty, a, a, a man, you know, a midget, if you will, 6'6", 290, and a sophomore. I mean, they are young, they are deep. And they're talented. And they're good. Yeah. Absolutely. It only took the luck of the Irish to beat Michigan in Ann Arbor. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I should say in South Bend. And uh, Bo's hard-headedness to kick the ball to Raheem Ismael uh, last year in Ann Arbor two times. <laughs> yeah. Rory Lee won't get a chance to return that kickoff from J.D. Carlson. And the Badgers will start from their own 20. And who comes in at quarterback number nine, Sean Wilson, his first time this afternoon. Well, we're going to get a chance to see uh, Sean. He played against the Wolverines a year ago up in Ann Arbor. And Sean kind of gives the Badgers a different type of offensive look. He's more of an option type of quarterback. They use him in a uh, sprint out pass situation. So uh, let's see if he can, uh, can breathe some fire into this offense and uh, give Michigan a, a different type of scheme to look at uh, in this quarter. Maybe we'll surprise him. <laughs> Wilson. And he goes to the far sideline. And was that Tom Brown making the catch? Yes, it was. Uh, Mr. Brown. Because of Wilson's size or lack thereof, what they do with him a little bit more than a Tony Lowry because of his size is they'll sprint Sean out a little bit more so he can look down the field. Mm -hmm. Sean goes at about 5'10 if he's standing on a three-foot... Uh, <laughs> Uh, whatever those would be called, I don't know, three-inch uh, razors. <laughs> Platform. There you go. Thank you very much. You had your funkin' waggle with you, and I'm glad that you were, you brought that up. Mark Montgomery's in their tailback also now, Van. Well, you know, we haven't seen Theo Carney. Now, I don't know if they just, for reasons, have not wanted to use him. Maybe they. They, if they can, try to get a red shirt year for Theo Carney. I mean, that's a decision the coaches have to come to grips with. Wilson, scramble. Dumps it off. Nice grab by Tim Weir going out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Wilson to Tim Weir. Well, there, there's a good example of uh, Sean Wilson's mobility. Uh, he's a little more mobile than Tony. Uh, gets out. Can't get the pressure from the inside on him because he'll squirt out of there. And, you know, it's, it's not always pretty, but he gets it done. And that play uh, was busted. And help leading the bust was Eric Newth. Yeah, sophomore was... out of Plymouth, Michigan. Backup nose guard for T.J. Osman. Started off to look something like a boot, but I think there was a little mistake in there. One of the backs. Loss of five on that play. Second and 15 for the Badgers. Montgomery, the lone running back, stays in to protect Ooh. and nearly intercepted, almost knocking it down and making the interception. Dave Ritter. Mark Mangum was a the receiver there. Dave, no relation to Tex, although he does play a mean guitar. <laughs> Badgers have got a lot of subs in the game right now also. This is Wilson uh, going to Mark Mangum. Mangum, a former quarterback, 
turned wide receiver. He holds for Rich Thompson on field goals and PATs, of which the Badgers have had no chances for a PAT thus far. Where over the middle of the field, going to be overthrown and thrown ever so slightly behind Corin Brown. Fourth and 15, we see Mr. Brecky, and there we see Mr. Alvarez, and he says, let's go and start concentrating on Iowa. There's a case where Sean uh, uh, Ware was clearly the uh, uh, primary receiver, but a Bourne was underneath and was wide open. Brecky hangs okay. one up there, okay. and it bounces into the end zone. Very good punt by Brad Brecky. Excellent punt. Fifty-nine yards. I had to count them up with my abacus, and that's what took me a little longer to uh, to get that total. My abacus, one of those beads stuck, <laughs> and uh, I couldn't quite get them moved over there. But uh, fifty-nine. I said one shy of sixty is what? And I thought fifty-eight. No, that's just fifty-nine. They they learned me real well. <laughs> High school and college. <laughs> so the Wolverines from their own 20 yard line. Kenny Solomon's a quarterback here. Alfie Birch going in motion. Oh. And there's a fumble. Loose ball, and the Badgers have the turnover. <laughs> now for the 64,000. That started here, and I don't know if there are that many here right now. It doesn't appear to be that way. There is a reason to pound flesh to flesh, as in the form of applause. It's a good hit in there. The ball just squirted loose. Yeah. Robert Newell helped to squirt the, the ball loose, and then Brendan Lynch. I got it. I got it. I think I got it. Right he his hands. came right down with it. Good interception, by the way. All right, let's see if the Badgers can put this ball in the end zone now. There's a good look at Brendan. Hillsdale, Illinois, 6'2", 240-pound junior linebacker. And there is a timeout being used by Wisconsin. A little worried. Uh, the sweats from all these substitutions <laughs> I've tried to keep up with here. <laughs> Wilson looking one way, going to air it out to where, and it's going to be overthrown. He looked one way, couldn't find an open man, and he turned back and went the other way. He found Tim Ware open, but just overthrown. So second and 10 for Wisconsin following the fumble and the recovery made by Brendan Lynch. This is the Badgers best field position of the day and we are seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And they got this via a Michigan turnover. Wilson straight drop back pressured sack third and, and a dozen to go Wins bring somebody from the outside Wilson scrambling and making the catch and the reception is number 19 Aaron Brown, Aaron Brown. Wilson to Aaron Brown excellent catch by Aaron Brown now credit Wilson for just hanging in there because he was just waiting for somebody to try to break open. You can see pressure. he was looking patient. to the far side and then he goes to the near side and he's just waiting for somebody to come back and get the ball and that's what Aaron Brown did. Good catch by Aaron Brown. It, Sean had a lot of running room there also. I'm just sure he couldn't have picked up uh, close down by running now. Second catch for Aaron Brown this ball inside the 10 yard line. Option, Wilson cuts it back, hit hard by Newt. Tom Brown in motion to the far side. Here comes a blitz, Wilson, and he's gonna be sacked on the play, Ryan Townsend. And that really hurts the Badgers now, that sets up. He's been around the block a few years, right. he knows what's going on. It's part of the learning process. And Robinson almost missed on a block. Wilson, oh! deflected at the so a 33 yard field goal attempt remember Mangum backup quarterback the kick is up 
And the shutout is over. All right. So Rich Thompson puts the Badgers on the scoreboard following the fumble and the recovery by Brendan Lynch. It's just like Wisconsin. So the Wolverine offense will have the ball just shy of the 30 yard line and as they have for most of this fourth quarter a good portion of the third period working with their second and third string players. There's a fumble center to quarterback exchange, and the Wolverines fall on it. I think it was quarterback Salem who was visiting us today. He's a member of the University of Michigan Athletic Board. Here's Ricky Powers, and look out. Ricky Powers across the 40 and ridden down to the... You say that uh, Gary's job is in, uh, in good hands, at least until next week in Michigan State, right? Absolutely. Okay, all right. Well, as we, as we said at the start of the game, Bo left Mo in good shape with this team. There's a lot of depth on this team. They've obviously done very well in the going out and attracting uh, uh, their fair share of the blue blue chip players in the in the in the country because there's a lot of depth on this team. Uh, they just seem to bring one good player, out, take one out, and put another one in. There, uh, there certainly is. And Bo did in fact leave Mo uh, with an excellent team. There's a tremendous amount of talent. The offensive line we all knew would be very good. But as you can see, the backs are also doing very well today. Ricky Powers is a freshman, so we'll have him around for another three years. So uh, we have uh, games like this to look forward to for a long time to come. Now, I, I used to live in Michigan, so I know how important this game next week is to you guys with Michigan State. This is kind of for the bragging rights of the state of Michigan and also, I think, for the recruiting of the best players in, Michi in, in Michigan. Oh, absolutely. We will not have to spend any time getting our players ready uh, for next week. Uh, when you when Michigan beats Michigan State, whenever they meet, the records go out the window, and it, we know it's going to be a tough game, but we'll certainly be there uh, rooting them on. Well, I certainly hope we have weather like this in Ann Arbor next week. I think, what, the winner of the Michigan State-Michigan game the last three years has gone to the Rose Bowl. So a lot rides on the outcome of that ball game. Well, I've already made my reservations uh, for Pasadena, so I hope uh, I'll not be disappointed. <laughs> you know, Michigan saved a lot of money when they named Mo the head coach because they just changed the B on the door from B to M, from Bo to Mo. It saved a few dollars, you know? Dollars are hard to find. Well, they sure did, and he is. In fact, we held our, our last athletic board meeting in there last week. Uh, we got a chance to look at it. It's an out. Well, there's about 44 seconds in ticking. This one winds down, and the Badgers will find themselves on the road for the first time this season after this day. And uh, they're going to have to get used to road cooking as opposed to home cooking, and that might be the final play of this ball game. And the Badgers are going to go down to their Big Ten opening loss. The Wolverines will start their Big Ten season off in style with a W. And now we're under 10 seconds, and that will do it. The Wolverines walk off the field a victor. So it's hail to the victors at 41 to 3. They came in here, they, they came, they saw, they conquered. I don't know how else you can put it. Their, their, their running attack was very explosive. They didn't need to pass the ball all that much. So for Merritt Norvell, I'm Van Stout. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. The Badgers go on the road again. The final score between Mo and Barry. Michigan 41, Wisconsin 3.
This is WMVT Milwaukee beginning our broadcasting day on Channel 36. WMVT is licensed to the Milwaukee Area District Board of Vocation. Guaranteed you paid exactly what you wanted to pay for those stocks. At the free Better Trades Workshop, you'll learn to maximize and protect your retirement. You can learn to trade online from your own computer with the practice account and doesn't matter whether you invest a little or a lot of money. The strategies and techniques you'll learn at the free Better Trades Workshop work exactly the same. It's Big Ten College Football from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. The matchup the nation's third-rated team, the Michigan Wolverines, against the Wisconsin Badgers. I'm Van Stout, joined by Merritt Norvell, and what a way for Barry Alvarez in his first Big Ten campaign to kick off his conference season against the nation's third-best team, the Michigan Wolverines, who are led by their first-year coach, Gary Moeller. Yeah, I think that this is, uh, uh, this is the way to do it. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is the number one team in the nation right now. This is what people come to uh, the Big Ten to do. This is what kids practice for. So I think this is a great opportunity. It's a major challenge for the Badgers today. But I think this is what Big Ten football is all about. Is this